Penrose tiling is a method to fill an entire plane in a non-periodic way using two kinds of tiles. Kites, the light tiles, and darts, the dark tiles. The main feature of this tiling is precisely the aperiodic nature of the two tiles. It's not possible to fill the plane in a periodic way by means of kites and darts. We will now show the geometric construction of the two tiles. The two tiles, the dart and the kite, can be obtained from a regular decagon having as its side one and as a radius the well-known golden ratio that is approximately 1.618 following the procedure shown in the animation. Surprisingly, even in this construction we find the ubiquitous golden ratio, one of the most famous numbers in the whole of mathematics. This is the dart. And this is the kite. Actually, using such tiles, we can fill the whole plane in a periodic way. Indeed, by construction, the two tiles can be combined to form a rhombus, which has, as its side, the golden ratio. And these rhombi can be arranged in an ordered and repetitive pattern. Mathematicians say that this is a periodic way to fill the plane, since one can shift the tiles in many directions, as shown in the animation obtaining a pattern that looks exactly the same as initially. A periodic tessellation requires translations in at least two different directions which do not modify the pattern. As you can see, in this case, there are far more. If the tiling were made only of rhombi, there would also be other types of symmetries, such as rotations of 180 degrees. But such symmetries do not work in the case of darts and kites. As you can see, the colors are exchanged and the initial configuration is lost. Note that the symmetries must involve all the tessellation, not just some tiles. This periodic tiling is characterized by the group of symmetries that crystallographers call CM, given by two translations and a reflection about a vertical line. On the other hand, rotating the rhombi by 180 degrees does not work unless one considers a tessellation made only with rhombi, that is, the two tiles joined together and with no color scheme. This would create more symmetries of the sort known as CMM. In order to ensure that our tiles can't be arranged in this periodic way, we will shape their sides as in a jigsaw puzzle, setting up what are known as adjacency constraints. From now on, you should always consider the tiles in the animation as subject to these constraints, even if they are not shown. As you can see, now you can't join the kite and the dart to form a rhombus and the kite and the dart can be placed in only a limited number of positions. However, it still seems possible to fill the plane without leaving holes, fitting the pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle. 
But how can we be sure that in this way we can really fill the entire plane without any gaps? We will now describe a procedure that will provide a way for doing so. In the first step, we split the tiles along their axis of symmetry, obtaining two acute isosceles triangles from the kite and two obtuse isosceles triangles from the dart. These are all golden triangles since the proportion between their sides is the golden ratio, as shown in the animation. You can see that in the acute triangle, the proportion of the long side to the short side is the same as that of the short side to the difference. And the same applies to the obtuse triangle too. Now we will cover the golden triangles formed by the split tiles with many smaller copies of the triangles. So you can see that three copies of a small kite and two copies of a small dart cover a large kite and a large dart. The procedure known as deflation-inflation means that this division and covering are repeated again and again. We begin with any initial arrangement, for instance a regular decagon made up by five kites. Now we apply the subdivision process explained before to each triangle resulting in a more refined subdivision. As you can see, the new smaller triangles are arranged in such a way that, when reassembled, they form new darts and kites. Now repeat the procedure once more on each kite and also on the darts. In this way, we comply fully with the adjacency constraints we mentioned earlier. And as you can see, the triangles always reassemble together, again forming darts and kites. This is the fourth iteration of our procedure. We can see that a central decagon, exactly like the initial configuration, has appeared. We go on with the fifth iteration. The number of tiles increases significantly. Sixth iteration. Seventh iteration. Eighth iteration. We can continue forever, filling an ever increasing area of the plane. Here is the result after nine iterations. amazing, isn't it?
Given the initial choice of the configuration, the resulting tessellation will have rotational symmetries, that is, when rotated by 72 degrees. And also axial symmetry, with reflections about lines passing through the center of the decagon. Of course, there aren't translational symmetries since the tessellation we produced is non-periodic. There are exactly 10 symmetries for this tessellation, forming the so-called dihedral group D5, that is, the symmetries of a pentagon. This group is generated by a rotation of 72 degrees and a reflection about a line through the center. By slightly deforming the boundary of darts and kites we can get new forms which can be quite strange in the spirit of the drawings of Escher, the famous Dutch artist. In this case we show you the form of a bird and a reptile the reptile takes the place of the dart, while the bird takes the place of the kite. As you can see, the tiles are shaped so as to fit together perfectly, and they fill the plane in the same way as the Penrose tiles. Here is the result after five iterations of the procedure of deflation-inflation. A familiar variant of Penrose tiling consists of two types of rhombi, fat rhombi and thin rhombi. There is a close relationship between rhombi and the darts and kites, as we see in the animation. For fat and thin rhombi too, it is possible to envisage a strategy of covering with golden triangles, thus setting up a process of deflation-inflation similar to that used for darts and kites. Starting from an appropriate initial configuration, after six iterations of the new procedure of deflation-inflation, we reach the tessellation with rhombi shown here. Again, by setting appropriate adjacency constraints respected by the process of deflation-inflation, we obtain a non-periodic tiling of the plane. Finally, we show the original Penrose tiling, the one that led Penrose to discover simple non-periodic tilings. Penrose started with a large pentagon and divided it into six smaller pentagons. Then he subdivided each pentagon into even smaller pentagons. Repeating the procedure a few times, however, some gaps remained, shaped like pentagons, rhombi, crowns and stars. Thus Penrose obtained a set of six tiles, three types of pentagons, a rhombus, a crown and a star, that fill the plane in a non-periodic way. By subsequent processing he was able to reduce the number of tiles to two, the dart and the kite. At present it's still not known whether there is any one single tile which allows only non-periodic tilings.